Yep. And he's joining me. Hey, Jason. Hey, sorry, I'm on. All right, good. All right, we'll go I ahead and get started. But... Yep, yep, thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Matt uh, Tour with Insurance Agency Marketing. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're glad you could join us on this Thursday morning. We're going to be going over some really exciting details with Equitrust on a couple of new strategies they've come out with here recently. Glad to have Jason Goodrich join us this morning. And uh, Jason will be joining us here shortly to go over some details regarding what they're offering there at uh, Equitrust. We'll go ahead and get things moving here. I know we have uh, some really nice additional benefits we offer through IMS based on production in your first number of months. And you get uh, different levels you can qualify for based on your annuity production over the next six months. We have anywhere between $100,000 and a million dollar levels of programs you can qualify for anywhere from iPads to cash to retirement boss radio programs. Uh, different lead systems based on seminar selling, preset annuity appointments. We have a really good wide variety of, of options there based on what you qualify for in, in that space. But a uh, really nice introductory offer we offer through IMS, and uh, we have a lot of agents have qualified for a lot of the enhancements over the years, and they've had a, a really good increase in their business based on using some of the seminars or annuity appointments. And some of those programs, of course, cash always helps to pay for some of their expenses based on putting on seminars or, you know, whatever that may be they're currently utilizing, but definitely a good program there we have. A couple other good programs we offer our referred producer program. You can uh, get uh, cash bonuses based on referrals. <laughs> you also receive additional compensation based on sitting in your, your referral sitting in business, if you have two referrals that send in a million dollars a piece, that'd be $4,000 of additional cash coming your way. I have agents that call me every quarter looking for their balance to be being sent based on their referrals. And we have a, a real nice block of agents that do receive quarterly payments from us based on the referrals they've given us. So if you do have a work with one of your sales directors, a great time to, uh, Refer agents during this uh, pandemic. I know uh, some agents are more active than others, but a really good way to uh, earn some additional money here throughout the year. We also have our marketing reimbursement program. You earn $100 every $100,000 of annuity premium you have issued to go towards marketing. I know when you submit your receipts, we reimburse half the cost. So if you spent $2,000 to put a seminar on, we re reimburse $1,000 of that. So really a nice program we put together and a good system we have available here through IMS based on that. Got a great back office support team. We have a great new business team. They help with everything from reviewing applications to statusing those applications. We've got a great creative team that helps you with putting together advertising. They're really specialized in social media advertising website development, you know, a lot of different avenues you can utilize with them to help expand your business. We've got a great uh, life team that can help you out with life quotes, help with underwriting questions, you know, whatever may come up. We've got a great creative team, as I mentioned, good contracting team where you can get licensed up on one platform and be able to get licensed with a number of companies at one time. Really makes your job easier based on submitting that through the uh, contracting platform we do have a website available here through imes we are constantly revamping this and we've got a, it's a great tool to utilize to look at current interest rates download forms do quotations we've got a great income calculator on there you can compare incomes based on different carriers we've got our annuity grid we keep up to date as often as we can <laughs> based on that with rates constantly changing we like to keep that up to speed. That way you can go online, look at the rates, make sure you're getting your client you know, the best possible rate you can. We've got different industry links. Maybe look up an AMVEST report on a carrier. Maybe we want to go to a tax link or maybe a, a state insurance department link. 
we do have a lot of those available on our industry link page. It's really a, a nice area to go to. We also have some great sales ideas on the website and a lot of good information you can utilize on that. We're gr glad that we uh, have co-opted with Firelight. They have a great e-app program. I know we have a lot of carriers, including Equitrust, that is available on the e-app system. We have more companies coming on board here in the next couple of months, so it really helps speed up the app process. A lot less corrections need to be made when you're doing e-apps, and also no handwriting problems. Really easy to utilize during these days when you know it's harder to meet maybe face to face with some clients. They want to do it virtually. You could take advantage of that based on the e-app system. So we've seen a a huge increase this year. And the percentage of applications coming through our office using e-apps, I think it's up to about 30% now, where it used to be less than 10%. So we've seen a, a triple effect based on the uh, pandemic and what else is happening in the market. And really, we've seen a big movement over to e-applications, which I think is really good to have. We have a great creative team, as I mentioned, that can help you out with maybe rebranding your logo, doing business cards, stationery helping out with social media advertising, you know, doing email blasts, digital marketing. They can really help with that whole side of the business. And we have agents that come to us all the time. They send us their, their current website. We can look at their website, make some suggestions of what maybe what they want to do to improve it and really help them capitalize on their investment and their, their digital marketing website development all that good stuff. Maybe we'll do some postcards. I just talked to an agent the other day that sends out postcards on a on a monthly basis to people turning 65. And I know we're helping him out with that. So it's it's really a good program to utilize based on what we have available through the that side of the the business. We've got a, a great wealth management team also here. We have uh, a, a group of individuals we brought on board that that specialize on that side of it. They've got some great information to go by maybe you haven't gone the securities route yet maybe you're looking at taking your series 65 and you want to look into getting more involved in that so i'm going to launch a quick poll if you have interest in and in having one of our wealth management team give you a call to review that side of the market i know it's always good to have additional arrows in your quiver available for your clients you know you hate to refer a client down the street that client goes and meets with the other individual. Down the road, you end up losing that client because the other individual offers both securities and insurance. Whereas if you had your, your securities license, you'd be able to handle all sides. I know they've got some great platforms for investments on that end. And we're constantly adding on more choices. We've got a great group of individuals that can help you out with you know getting started, getting things going on that end, and also utilizing some of the uh, investment options on that side of the business. So if that's something you have some interest in utilizing, mark off yes. I'm going to leave this poll open for about another 20 seconds. And we'll go ahead and have uh, either Charles Jr. or Michael give you a call and review some of the options we have on the wealth management side. Really a good program to utilize there. But keep that in mind, we do have it available here through IMES. And we have seen a lot of our top producers get a series 65 be more active on that side of the business and their business increases on both sides because they're able to help clients on all ends and not have to refer clients down the road or not get those clients in the first place based on that i'm gonna go ahead and close that webinar that question up real quick i'm gonna go ahead and, and move forward here <laughs> we also do trainings i know we do uh typically three of these four of these a year We've kind of been been on hold here in 2021 due to travel restrictions and some of the restrictions on, on having groups of people together. But uh, we'd put these on typically in either Omaha, Nebraska, or in Iowa to be at one of our home offices. And I'm gonna launch another quick poll here, but uh, this is a, a two and a half day academy. We fly agents in at our cost. We pay for your lodging, we pay for your travel, we pay for your food, your beverages, everything's handled for you. And we'll probably start these back up in 2021, kind of see how things play out the first quarter of next year. 
and see what we're able to do regarding travel restrictions, you know, having groups of people together from all over the country. We'll see what's available here in 2021. But if that's something you have some interest in doing down the road, and we know we have bringing a lot of good speakers. We're bringing some life insurance specialists to help you on the life insurance side. We bring a number of uh, annuity specialists out, which can help you on that end. We bring in some of our top producers that can help you guide you on, on that side of it too. So that's something you have some interest in, in coming out to. Markoff, yes. We'll go ahead and put you on the list of interested parties. We'll contact you here throughout the end of the year. Make sure you're aware of uh, maybe when the first meeting is announced here for 2021. To be start these in March or April of, of the following year. We'll probably look at that here for 2021 and see if we can get something put together here for early next year. But uh, otherwise, I'll leave about 10 more, 10 more seconds here. If you want to mark off yes or no, that'd be great. We'll go ahead and uh, put you on that list for interested parties and hope we can have you come out to uh, visit IMS here in 2021 and really get a good feel for what we offer here from, from our office. I'll get, get that closed up here. We typically offer uh, some trips also. We have uh, our Punta Mita Four Seasons qualification here, if this is for trip here in 2021. We have uh, March is the date we're looking at here, March the 7th through 11th for our initial trip. It takes three and a half million points to qualify and qualification does uh, run 18 months total and it runs here through the end of December. Of course, we're looking at you know what the travel is going to be like here early in uh, 2021. We might have to delay the trip until the end of the year. We'll have to see what happens on that end. But uh, we do offer a couple nice trips here. We have an extended trip for our larger producers, uh, six and a half million points to qualify for that. And it's going to be in uh, the Four Seasons Resort in Punta Mita, Mexico. It'll basically be an extension on our other trip. That way you get uh, some additional Playtime there in Mexico, really a nice, a couple of nice resorts there you can take advantage of on that end. On that note, we're going to go ahead and transfer over the presentation to Jason here. I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, done here shortly. change presenters here. I'm going to go ahead and put you on board here, Jason. Your screen should be showing now so you can uh, pull up the, the, your slideshow. But appreciate you joining us this morning, Jason. Glad that you could make it here in, in here on a Thursday morning, right before the weekend. Glad you could uh, join us today. I do show your All screen right, is now on, Jason, so you, you're good to go on, on your end. All right, Matt. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Matt said, my name is uh, Jason Goodrich. I'm uh, one of the national account managers here at Equitrust Life Insurance Company. Uh, first off, let me just thank everyone for taking time to join me this morning. Uh, the focus will really be on the four index annuities with Equitrust. Uh, and then we're also going to touch on, as Matt said, the uh, the two new indices we added back in mid-April. And uh Two different like one one's with barclays and one is the s p mark five we'll touch those on those a little bit uh what they've done is taken our products which are very competitive our index annuities and made them even more competitive from a growth standpoint uh, and i'll show some examples of that some historical data on that uh i'll try to keep things pretty short i'm just going to go over the annuities at a pretty high level once again talk about the indices so i don't expect to take more than 20 minutes or so and then i think if you have any questions you're able to type those in and we can address those at the end of the presentation uh, lastly, let me just thank uh, all the great folks over at IMS. Uh, they're just a great family-oriented or organization. They've been a great partner from Equitrust for Equitrust since the very beginning of Equitrust. So really appreciate the relationship with them. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before I get into uh, the products and stuff, I do want to mention uh, a change that we did made, uh, which was necessary for sure, and, and that's the ability to do remote sales with Equitrust. Uh, prior to March or so, we did not allow anything other than face-to-face -face sales. Uh, we were in the process of changing that, and then with the coronavirus stuff, it kind of sped things up. So we do allow for non-face-to-face meetings. Uh, there's just a disclosure form on our website that needs to be completed if it's not going to be face-to-face. -face. And there's basically two different options. 
if it's a situation where you have a relationship with that client, uh, you can do the the sale over the phone uh, and just have the form signed by them. And then the other option is if it's a new client that you do not have a previous relationship with, you can still do it remotely, but it has to be done uh, via video. So either option we allow. Uh, we I don't have a slide on here, but we also use Firelight. Uh, Matt mentioned that IAMS is up and running on Firelight, and so is Equitrust. So you can do it right through their system or through ours. Okay, what I'm going to do is, um, like I mentioned, I'm going to talk about the four index annuities, but for sake of time, I'm going to focus on the non-income rider versions. Uh, we do have income riders available on four index annuities. We do have some nice niches there, but really our top competitive advantage is our non-income rider index annuities and our accumulation growth on them. And what, you, and what you'll see there, like I said, is the four annuities. Now, what we did about about a year and a half ago is we really simplified things. We kind of went the other way, the other direction from the industry. So instead of adding more products and more strategies, we reduced things. So we went from nine products to four products uh, about a year and a half ago. And in doing so, not only did we keep every competitive advantage we had, but we actually added a few more competitive advantages. So by cutting the portfolio in half, we actually made ourselves much more competitive and we really simplified it for you guys uh, in just the four products. And what you'll see too is that we have kind of a, uh, three different main niches other than just the accumulation. Number one is premium bonuses. Okay, we've always been kind of a leader in premium bonus products. You can see there we have two products, market power bonus with 10% upfront premium bonus and the market 10 bonus with a 6% premium bonus. Both of those are upfront, no vesting, no recapture charges. We'll get more into them in a second here. The other area, like I mentioned, is just straight accumulation, okay, the second niche. We have two different products there that we'll talk about. Very simple, clean products. Uh, the main difference is one's 10 years and one's seven years. And the third niche is with the return of premium. Uh, this is on our market 10 bonus product. We'll talk more about this too, but it does offer a, a guaranteed day one return of premium. So it's a, it's a great fit for those options where maybe an index annuity makes sense for the client, but for one reason or another, they can't get past the surrender schedule. Uh, this is a great product to pivot to. Okay, we'll get more into those in a second. Before I do, let me talk about the two new indices uh, that Matt had mentioned. Uh, the first is the Barclays Focus 50 is what it's called. This is exclusive to Equitrust. So it is only available on the Equitrust annuities. It is available on all four Equitrust annuities. Obviously, you know, with this, like with all of them, the goal is to get the highest returns, right? But to do so within a targeted level of volatility. So we're going to hold the level of volatility down and shoot for the best returns we can get. The way they do that is allocating in between a couple different things. Number one is the 50 lowest U.S. volatility stocks. Let me pull up my thing here and help you kind of see what I'm pointing at. So, so number one here is the 50 lowest uh, volatility U.S. stocks. These are big companies. Okay, these are the, the companies that make up these 50 stocks are going to be what I call the big boring companies. Right. So you're not going to see Tesla in there, Twitter in there, stuff that has a lot of volatility. You're going to see big stable companies. Uh, just to give you an idea, the current 50. Some of the some of the companies that make up the current 50 U.S. stocks are. Amazon, AT&T, Campbell Soup, Clorox, Colgate, Dollar General Store, eBay, Hormel Foods, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Verizon, Walmart, Waste Management. And that's just a highlight of some of the companies. Uh, these are companies that are stable, have been around a long time, and that your clients are going to know. Okay, And the Barclays research shows them that over time, these perform the best. The big, boring companies are the ones that actually perform the best, especially during times like we find ourselves in now. So it takes those 50 uh, stocks and combines it with four different lengths of treasuries, a two-year, a five-year, a 10-year, and a 30-year. Then cash is the other component to keep the volatility down to 5%. Okay, so it's just gonna do a monthly reallocation between that shooting for the best possible performance. I'll come back and show you some historical data on that in a second. The other one we have is called the S&P Mark V, and you may be familiar with this. This is not exclusive to Equitrust. Uh, there are some other carriers that do have this available. Uh, at least three other carriers, maybe four other carriers that have this strategy out there, and it has performed very well, just like the Barclays. 
Once again, very simple. Uh, you know, like we talked about before, the goal is to get the best return while maintaining that 5% volatility. And there's three components that make up the S&P Mark V. Number one is equities, number two is commodities, and number three is fixed income. And what's nice about all of these, are, these are things your clients, once again, have heard of. The equity portion is going to be the S&P 500, right? Very familiar. The commodity portion is going to be gold. And, this, and the reason we use gold is, is that it's a great hedge against inflation. Then the third part, the fixed income, is made up of the 10-year treasury, right? So it's very simple to understand just the three components. Uh, it's going to do a daily uh uh reallocation between them so like the barclays is monthly this is daily so it's going to shift it around looking for the best possible return both of these indexes the barclays and the mark five have websites dedicated to them so you can google barclays focus 50 and it'll take you to a website where you can get all kinds of information where you can show your client a, a video uh historical data returns what the current allocations are same thing with the mark five there's a website out there with a video and stuff and you can follow up with me or Matt and we can get you details on that too. So these are the two new indices. And let me uh, get into a little bit kind of how they performed. What I got here is just showing a chart, uh, showing how, you know, how well these work during volatile times, right? Obviously there's a lot of volatility right now with the coronavirus. So this goes back to uh, uh, March 10th, at right? the beginning of coronavirus and shows how these strategies performed against the S&P 500. You see the S&P 500 here, obviously a lot of volatility, so a lot of ups and downs, right? You see the Barclays and Mark V, a little up and down there, but because you're controlling the volatility, you don't get near the shifts, right? And you can see very steady since, you know, April, just very steady along the line. So that's what it does is really smooths out the volatility, gives the clients, uh, you know, kind of consistency during uh, times of a lot of volatility. Here's just kind of a really what this is is just kind of raw returns of the S and P 500 versus the Focus 50 versus the Mark 5 going back to 2004. Okay, just annual returns. And once again, these are raw numbers. So if you go down here and you look at annualized, you'll see the S and P annualized return since 2004 is 6.89, Barclays 579, Mark 5 5.17. So it appears that the S and P has been the best performer. However, once again, these are raw numbers. So these don't take into account caps or participation rates or spreads. These are just the numbers. As you probably know, an S&P 500 point to point, you know, you know, a very competitive strategy on this would have a 30% participation rate. So really you only be looking at 30% of this number. Where with the Barclays and the, and the Mark V, in some cases we have over 100% participation rate. So when you apply that factor to this, uh, the returns of the Barclays and the Mark V uh, do exceed the returns of the S&P 500. And the last thing I want to show you here is, is year to date. This is just through July 15th. I think it might be higher now, but through July 15th, the S&P was down 1%. You can see the Barclays was up 2.15, uh, and then the S&P Mark V was up over 5.5%. So those two strategies, even during the downturn, have performed, and that's because they're shifting the money between areas. For example, with the the focus 50 because of the volatility in the first quarter towards the end of the first quarter it shifted money out of the equities and into the bonds and it got performance because of the performance of the 30-year bond and then as volatility has calmed down a little bit it shifted more back into equities and its performance during the second quarter was driven by that by its equity performance as the market came back some so that's kind of what's nice about it is it's kind of shifting around to what to where the volatility is not and, and Jason, going back to look at that last slide, you can see that, you know, there's different years where the Mark V outperformed the, the Focus 50. So it's probably a wise choice to kind of blend those together in, in, in the investment strategy for the client. Is that what you've been seeing a lot of apps coming in with that blend coming in? Yeah, on the products that we have both. Uh, the Mark V is only on two of our products, where the Barclays mm -hmm. is on all four. So, but yeah, we do see a blend and it does make a lot of sense. Uh, right. And also, if you look at this, yeah, you're not going to see the, you don't see the 30% return like you do on the S&P. Yeah, so you don't see the big shifts up, but you still got 12%, but you also don't see the big shifts down like the negative 38 on the S&P where you got positive returns on the Barclays and the Mark V. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, 
it's a, it's a great way to diversify. So, you know, I'm not at all against using the S and P 500. I think it's great to mix it between all three of them personally right. to diversify it. Exactly. So I'll talk more about it. I'll talk more about renewal rates on it too, and here in a minute, which is another reason I think it's important to have a uh, ball control index on your products. Sure. Uh, what this is here is this is just showing the current participation rates. I'll go through this a little more in a second right here on each of the products. Uh, this is the Barclays one year. This is the Barclays two year. This is the Mark V. Then it shows the best 10, worst 10, last 10. So if you run an illustration with Equitrust, these are the numbers you're going to see, the last 10. Okay. It will show all three. It'll show the best 10, worst 10, last 10. But as far as the tabular values, on the illustration or tabular detail, it will show the last 10. So what you see is you see illustrated rates anywhere from 5.16 at the lowest all the way up to 10.24 at the highest. Obviously, that doesn't, you know, illustrated rates don't, you know, don't predict what it's going to do, but it does give you an idea of how it's performed uh, in the past looking back. What the numbers I like even better are the worst 10. Right? You look at the worst 10, the worst, you know, going back. Uh, as far as we have to on our illustrations, the worst case is 3.76, right? The best worst is, what, 7.70 here. Mm -hmm. So really strong growth potential on the products, you know, with the illustrated rates. And then that, that shows you, you there, I mean, the value of, of maybe splitting your money on the Barclays between the one and two year. I mean, you could take a look at, you know, the, the difference in returns, but that, but you're still looking at some really good results. See, even in the, in, as you mentioned, the worst 10 years, you're still looking at some really good, good returns there along right. with that Mark five. And they're, they're all, most of them are above 5%. Yeah. And what we'll see people do is they'll put part of the money in the two year and then on mm -hmm. their first anniversary and part of it in the one year or one of the one year strategies. And then on their first anniversary, they might reallocate the one year strategy to its own two year. So basically what you have then is you have kind of offsetting two year strategies. If you're, if you're following me and you're right. So all, all your money's in a two year, but you're seeing returns every year because they're renewing. They're on opposite years. Mm -hmm. And we do see people, you know, that, where that's kind of the goal. Sure. Okay. Let's get into that product. Once again, we keep things very clean and simple. So as I go through this, you'll see that they're very easy to understand and very easy to follow. The first product is a market power bonus, which I guess is the flagship product of Equitrust. It's the first index annuity we uh, ever rolled out. Uh, we rolled it out in January of 2004, I believe. Uh, it's been our leading product, our leading seller every year since then, with the exception of one year. So it's you know definitely lasted the test of time. The market power bonus. A couple key features on it. Number one. You know, the big selling point of this is a 10% premium bonus. I mentioned this at the beginning, but with our premium bonuses, there is no vesting schedule. Uh, we do not have a recapture charge. So when they get the bonus, they get the bonus. And it's, it's a true cash bonus. They put $100,000 in, they immediately have an account value of $110,000. So if they were to pass away right away, the beneficiary would still get the $110,000. Okay. Surrender schedule, it is 14 years in, in most states, but it's 10 years in some states. Actually, 16 states, it's only 10 years in. Okay, so it's either 14 years or 10 years, depending on your state. Either state gets the 10% premium bonus up front, though, whether you're a 14-year state or a 10-year state. Issues up to age 75, and the commission, you can see two commissions here. One of them's 8%, one's 7%. That is dependent on if you're in a 14-year state or a 10-year state. Okay, so if you're in a 14-year state like Iowa, your commission would be 8%. If you're in a 10-year state like Pennsylvania, your commission would be 7%. Okay, and all those states are listed uh, on our state variation sheet on our website. Obviously, you can call uh, your marketer dimes and they can get you that information as well too. As far as who it's appropriate for and product positioning, I'll get more into this in a second. But because of the, but really, it's obviously it's somebody that's looking for a premium bonus, right? If a premium bonus is going to help them offset a surrender charge, you know, uh, maybe they were in a product that wasn't performing, it's going to give them a little boost there. You know, they're looking for early accumulation. I'm going to come back to this in a second and get more in detail on uh, when a premium bonus makes sense. Let me show you the rates first, and then we'll get into that. So here's the different strategies. We can see we've got multiple S&P strategies here, fixed account, 
then down here is the Barclays Focus 50. So you can see we currently have a participation rate of 65% um, on the one year, 90% on the two year. What this works out to from an illustrated rate, uh, I showed you a little bit ago, but it works out to 5.94% illustrated rate on the one year. And on the two year, it works out to an illustrated rate of 7.44. Right, so you get that 10% bonus and then you have great growth potential uh, because of the Barclays Focus 50. You know, you're not really limited on how much it can grow, plus you have that bonus. The other thing I wanted to mention is, is the renewal rates on this strategy. Uh, obviously with the S&P and volatility and option costs and things like that, you can see quite a bit of fluctuation of renewal rates on different strategies. You should not see that with the Barclays Focus 50. The reason being is we have a fixed option budget on it. And from a re renewal rate standpoint, Equitrust tries to keep the same, give the same value to the client every year, right? So whatever their option budget is at issue, we try to keep it the same at each renewal throughout the life of the contract. Okay, what, so what changes the renewal rates is option costs increasing. Well, because with the Barclays, we have fixed option costs, they won't change, right? And because it's controlled by volatility. So in reality, you should not see changes of renewal in the Barclays Focus 50. In fact, we have a, um, uh, we used to have another strategy similar uh, called the Dynamo. We don't have it any longer, but it worked similarly and it had a fixed option cost as well. And I actually saw an email a couple of weeks ago from our actuaries that said, on that strategy, we've had 567 renewal rates declared and never once has it gone down. So in 567 renewals, there's been no decreases. And that's similar how the Barclays Focus 50 should work. That's why I mentioned a little bit ago, I think it's important to have it on a product, even if you're not going to use it. Because maybe you're using the, you know, say you're using the point-to-point -point cap, and let's say it was 5%, but a renewal goes down to 3 or 4. This gives you an option for reallocation, to reallocate to these, because they're probably not going to go down. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I mentioned I want to talk a little bit more about the premium bonus. Uh, I think there's a little bit of myth in, in our industry. Uh, I hear sometimes, from, especially from other, you know, maybe carrier reps, that a premium bonus doesn't make sense for clients typically, and I don't think that's the case at all. I think in some cases, it makes sense for a client to go with no premium bonus, and in some cases, uh, it makes sense for the client to go with a premium bonus. Let me give you a couple examples here. So what I'm looking at here is the best 10 year period over the last 20 years of the S&P, okay? And I'm gonna compare a bonus product to a non-bonus product. So for the bonus product, I'm using the market power bonus, which is a 10% premium bonus with a 3% point-to-point -point cap. I'm gonna compare that to an index annuity with no bonus, but a 5% cap on the S&P, which is pretty standard. It's actually pretty competitive. And you can see here that the premium bonus starts out higher, eventually the non-bonus catches it, but it does take it seven years for that to happen in the best 10-year period. Okay, so it doesn't happen as quickly as I think some people think it does. It takes a while. So even in this case, if that client's going to need the money in these first seven or eight years for some reason, definitely could make sense to use a premium bonus. Same example, but let's take the worst 10-year period in the last 20 years. Same thing, 3% versus 5%. You can see it takes 14 years for that non-bonus product to catch up to the bonus product, okay? Uh, so it doesn't happen as fast as I think people think. So kind of breaking that down, when does it make sense then? Well, number one, I think it makes sense that the client has a short time horizon before they're gonna access the money, right? Maybe they're using it as a wealth transfer vehicle. We see a lot of people do that. We've seen more of it since the COVID thing has come out where they, um, you know, maybe they're not insurable or maybe they don't want to get life insurance for some reason. They can use this product to get the 10% bonus, which is vested immediately, and it can work as a wealth transfer vehicle. Number two is annuitization. Uh, this product is a 5 by 10 product. Uh, so if you're doing some sort of laddering or annuitization strategy, obviously it's going to help that value in the first five years because of the premium bonus. So it makes sense there. And I didn't get an income writers today, but obviously it made sense with an income writer to get the immediate boost to that value. Another one, I have a group that does a lot of this, and that's using the free withdrawals in the early years. Right? Maybe the client's you know, going to access Social Security in five years or whatever, 
but they need to sell income until then, so they're going to take out free withdrawals. Well, if you have a bonus product, your account value is higher in the early years, as we discussed. So, so obviously, your 10% free withdrawals are going to also be higher in the early years. Now, if they're recovering from an underperforming product, um, you know, maybe they're in a product that just hasn't performed. You know, maybe it, you know, the strategy just didn't perform how it illustrated, or maybe the renewal rates have come way down and it just doesn't work anymore. It's a way for them to get a boost to their values by by uh, 1035 or transferring over to this product. Low index performance. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how high your cap is if the index doesn't perform, right? So if you're concerned about future performance of the S&P 500, let's say, it, I think it makes a lot of sense to, you know, at least allocate part of the money to a premium bonus product. Uh, you can have a 10% cap, but if the S&P only goes up 1%, you still only get 1%, right? So makes sense there. And then last is low interest rates, which we find ourselves in now. Now, when rates and caps are not very high, I believe a premium bonus makes more sense, right? I think if the, a non-bonus product had a 10% cap versus 6% cap, maybe it makes more sense to use the uh, non-bonus product. But when you compare five to three, I, I think a bonus product, you know, you know, makes a lot of sense, which is kind of the environment we find ourselves in now. So that's some thoughts on when a bonus makes sense. Do you have anything you want to add, Matt, to that? No, I mean, I, we we see a, a large percentage of our, our apps coming in or on that power bonus contract. Probably makes up for what, 50, 60 percent of your business at this point? Uh, I'd say not that much because we haven't got to the market value yet. We see a lot more of the non, we're seeing a lot more non bonus right now, but it's by far the highest product. I'd say more like probably 40 percent of our sales. OK, good. In power bonus. Yeah, we're seeing yeah. an increase in the market value also, but we still see a large number of apps mm -hmm. coming in on that that power bonus, especially in some of these 1010 10 states where they, they get a 10% bonus on a 10 year contract. That's really a nice combination right now. Yep, we've seen an increase, uh, uh, you know, in those states for sure, but we've seen a big increase since the COVID coronavirus stuff started in the percentage going to the market power bonus. I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but we have seen an, in an increase percentage wise into the market power since March. They're probably trying to make up for okay. losses in the market. That's probably it. Yep. Yep. Right. Okay. Let's look at the uh, next bonus product, uh, number two, which is a market 10 bonus. A 10 stands because it's a 10 year design. So this product's 10 years. Uh, one of the great features about this product is it's flexible premium and it gives that 6% premium bonus for any premiums in the first five years. All right. So it makes, so it makes a lot of sense if they're going to be adding money to it down the road. It only requires $5,000 of qualified money to open it too, which I know there's not a lot of options, you know, in the industry for a lower premium product like that. Okay. So there is no, uh, or excuse me, there is no surrender charge. I can't think of the word, uh, can't think of the phrase, but if they add money in the fifth year, the surrender charge only goes five more years. It does not go for 10 years. A rolling surrender charge is what I'm looking for. Rolling surrender charge is what I'm looking for. Right. So no matter when you add it, the surrender charge isn't going to start over. And then the big silly point on this, too, is the return of premium guarantee that I mentioned at the beginning. And this is just what it says it is. It's just a guarantee to get their premium back at any time. There is no outward fee or cost uh, charged to the client on this. It's just automatically included with the product. Uh, in every state, the product's available. Okay, so if they put in $100,000 and something unexpected happens and they need to surrender it three months later, worst case scenario, they get their $100,000 back. Issues up to age 80 on this one, and we do pay full commission all the way to age 80, which is 6%. Okay, so full commission all the way to age 80. Okay, let's look at who this is appropriate for. A couple of big things. Obviously, the peace of mind with the return of premium. Right. I, I think this is a great product to pivot to, even if you're talking about a different product, but for some reason, the client can't get past the surrender charge schedule, you know, even though they're probably not ever going to need any more than the penalty free withdrawals. I think this is a, a great option for that client because this gives them that peace of mind to get what they want out of an index annuity, but also have that underlying guarantee that they can always get their money back. Along with that return premium, I should mention, though, in the commission, there is a two year charge back if they do surrender it. So obviously, it should be sold as a long-term vehicle, but that return of premium does uh, address the peace of mind concern with the client. Then the other one is a means to consolidate financial resources over many years. See a lot of this as well, because that 6% bonus is for, is for the first five years, 
Uh, it's a great way to consolidate different, you know, annuities, CDs. You know, we see a lot of CDs going into this. As you know, if a client has a CD, they probably have multiple CDs coming due at multiple times. That's really a great way to consolidate that because of that 6% bonus. Okay, it's so also quick look a good at the, yep. IRA deposits. So if someone wants to do IRA deposits yep. over a number of years, since it goes down to $5,000 on qualified monies, it's good to earn that bonus over a number of years for those deposits. Yep. Yep. And this, so like I said, it's the one product we have where you can do as little as 5,000 to open it. All, all the rest of our products on the index side require 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's a quick look at the rates and caps. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on these. They are a little bit lower than the 10% bonus product. And that's because of the return of premium, right? Although there's no outward cost to the client for the return of premium, it, it is part of the pricing, obviously, which means they're giving up a little bit in rate and cap to get that ROP. Look, take a look at the Focus 50 here. The one year's got a 60% participation rate, which still works out to a 5.16 illustrated rate. And the two year is an 80%, which works out to a 6.36 illustrated rate. Right. So with that return of premium, you still have that great growth potential again uh, within the product with these strategies. Okay, those are the two bonus products. Now let me move on to the two non-bonus products, the market value and the market seven. And what you're going to see here is these are about as easy to understand, clean and simple products as you can have from an index annuity standpoint, right? Ten-year design for the market value. Everything on this product is put into the rates and caps, right? So there's not a lot of bells and whistles, right? There's no premium bonus, uh, but it does have the standard features like a 10% free withdrawal and things like that. This one also goes to age 80. This one has a 7% commission all the way up to age 80 on the 10-year design. I should mention here now, too, that we do do a trail commission on this, uh, an option C, which is 1% trail, which obviously is very attractive uh, on an accumulation type product. And we do see quite a bit of, of trail options selected on this product. Uh, the 1% trail is on all of our index annuities. Who's this going to make sense for? Obviously, somebody looking for long-term growth. Somebody it feels good, the market's going to be going up, you know, pretty consistently over the 10 years. Uh, and it's going to hold on to this for a long time. Like I said, everything's right here in the rates and caps. So let's just jump over there. A lot more strategies on here, too, than on the bonus products. And partially that's by design. I think it's good to have a lot of strategies in a lot of cases. Doesn't mean you have to use them all, but it does give you a lot of options at renewal, right, to reallocate. Uh, the client's money, depending on current market conditions and things like that. One thing you'll notice with Equitrust too that I think differentiates us a little bit is is that we don't subsidize, right? So we don't put we don't subsidize to make one strategy look really good. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but some carriers will do that where they make one strategy really strong. I'd say the issue with that is is if it doesn't perform or if renewal rates come down, you don't have a lot of options of reallocation. We don't subsidize, so when you look at our strategy, you'll see that all of them are very competitive across the board. So our S&P point-to-point -point cap of four and a half is competitive. The par rate of 30% is competitive. We see a lot of money going in that, the monthly averages. We get down here to the Focus 50, you can see a 100% participation rate on the one year. Uh, that's an illustrated rate of, what is it, 7.9%, 140% par rate on the two year, which is an illustrated rate of 10.24% obviously very high and then this one has the mark five too so this one with the mark five you're looking at an illustrated rate of uh, 7.06 with 110 percent participation rate uh, to matt's point earlier yeah we do see people on this product use both of these strategies a lot uh, they usually use the s p the the focus 50 and the mark five we see that a lot uh, so just a, a lot of options here and like i mentioned too earlier is at renewal, these renewal rates should not change much. With this, well, really, they shouldn't change at all. I mean, they could, but they they really shouldn't, at least for a long time. Any comments on the rates or anything, Matt? I'll yeah. So, on. what what I usually suggest people do, and, and this is what I've kind of come up with, is I tell people to put 30% in the Focus 50 one year, 40% in the two year, and then 30% in the Mark 5. That way they have 60% of the money renewing on an annual basis, 40% on the two-year. It just feels like that's a pretty good blend on this, this 
specific product and I like the uh the way that, that illustrates that also. Yep, yep, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Definitely. Oh, I, I like the market value uh, though. Yeah, and it's been our fastest growing product. I mean, from a, over the last two years. I mean, we really kind of shifted uh, where most of our business is accumulation. The value's been a very steady product. You know, I'll bounce back here real quick, you know, talking about renewal rates. You know, when we first rolled out this strategy, we had a 55% participation rate, and I think that was two years ago. All of those are renewed, I believe, at the same or higher. Like, we've had no drops of renewal, even on the, the par account of the, of the uh, point-to-point S&P. So that was kind of my next slide was talking about renewal rates. I've mentioned this multiple times. I do so because I think it's very important. And I'm sure some of you out there have been kind of burnt by this with a client. It's not a great conversation to have with a client when renewal, renewal rates drop dramatically. And I will say, you know, at Equitrust, we do take a lot of pride and we have a lot of integrity with renewal rates. I mentioned this earlier, but we try to keep the same option budget value to the client throughout the term of the contract. We can't always do that because of reinvesting in bonds and things like that. But it is a priority. We do the best we can at that. And then the other thing is we make all of our renewal rates public to you uh, on our website. And it's all of them. So we don't cherry pick just a good renewal rate and show that on our website. If you go out to the Equitas website, you can put in any issue date for any of our products. It will show what it issued at on that date, and it'll show every renewal rate on things it issued on that date. So you can get a printout of everything. And then we have this is kind of this one marketing piece here that you can print off our website or we can send to you, just kind of giving an example. And once again, we're not showing the best example. We didn't cherry pick a great example because the fact is renewal rates are not perfect. If you look at this example, the point to point started at 6.25 stayed the same for three years, actually it went up to six and a half, stayed there for four years. So through year seven, the rate was actually higher than it was at issue. And then it started dropping uh, in year eight. The reason it started dropping here was because we, at this point we were having to reinvest in bonds and obviously the rate and the rates were lower. So our option budget shrunk at this point. So we could not buy the same uh, cap at this point. And that's the thing about Equitrust is I think when you see shifts in renewal rates, we can explain to you why that happened. Uh, and then you can explain to your client why that happened. I think it makes that conversation a lot easier. So once again, all public on our website. We have that marketing piece if you're interested in that. Okay, last product, the Market 7 Index. Very similar to the market value. It's built for accumulation. Main difference is seven-year chassis. All right, so there's a seven-year walk-away product. It is flexible premium. This is our only product that goes up to age 85. Okay, and there is this is our only product also on the index side where we have different commissions depending on age. So it's five and a half percent up to age 75, which is a really strong commission for a seven year product. We also still offer the 1% trail option on this product as well too. And kind of one of the differentiators on this product too is this guaranteed accumulation value benefit of 107%. What that means is uh, we'll do a one-time look at the client's account after after the seven years to make sure it's grown 7%. Okay, so if they put $100,000 in and then seven years later, their account value is 106000 at that time, we automatically raise it to $107,000. Okay, so they're guaranteed to have got that at the end of the seven-year term. Uh, basically, what it works out to is a 1% simple interest guaranteed to the client. Okay, so it's just a nice feature, especially from the people that we see shifting money from CDs, they really like to have that feature. And this is another product where we see a fair amount of CD money come into uh, uh, because it is flexible premium as well. And once again, rates are built, you know, the rates are kind of the driver of this because it's seven years instead of 10 years, like the market value, the rates are a little bit lower, uh, but still four and a half on a point to point cap. Uh, you know, we see a good amount of two-year averaging at 10% has performed really well, the two-year monthly averaging on the S&P. Uh, then 90% on the Barclays Focus 50, which is a 712 illustration. Uh, the two-year is 125% par is a 9.20 illustration. And the Mark 5 with 100% par is a 6.43 illustration. So uh, once again, I, you know, I always recommend diversifying, you know, between different strategies. Uh, you know, give yourself a few more options like Matt had mentioned. And then you want to add in the seven, Matt? Very similar to the value, just a little shorter. Yeah, I like the seven year also. I mean, it comes in pretty handy for older individuals. You got someone that's, you know, in their 80s, not a lot of options out there for indexed annuities. And this is a really good 
good play for him. Plus, it's a full death benefit to the beneficiary. You get the 10% free outs. It's just a nice combination on that seven-year contract. Yep, absolutely. Uh, with that, kind of last thing, and I'll wrap up a little bit. You see our company's strength here. We are uh, B double plus with AM best, uh, if you're not aware. Here's kind of better. Our financials are very strong. And if compared to A-rated carriers, you see our financials line up very well. Uh, 92% portfolio investment grade, 370, or excuse me, 367 RBC ratio, uh, which is over three times what's required, and a solvency of over 106. So, very, you know, very strong there. I can tell you the number one goal is and continues to be to get that rating back to the A level. Uh, we're one step away from that. And we feel good about it, but, you know, time will tell, but it is the number one goal is to get the A rating back. Okay, just a few takeaways uh, from this. Obviously, at premium bonus, we've been a leader in the industry with, with premium bonuses. I think the opportunity for premium bonuses is bigger now than maybe it's ever been. Uh, it's just more attractive to clients right now. Like Matt said, people have lost money, and, you know, it's a lower interest rate environment. It just makes sense to, I think, to look at premium bonuses. The ROP on our Market 10 bonus, a great way to give that client some peace of mind. Uh, give them the premium bonus, give them the, uncapped strategies, but also give them that underlying guarantee that they know their money's secure and they can always get it back. Spent a lot of time talking about the Barclays and, and Mark 5. I think they've been game changers to uh, our index annuities from an accumulation standpoint. Uh, we've always had great products, simple products, competitive on the S&P, but really added a, an accumulation element to the products that, that wasn't there prior. And then lastly is renewal rate integrity. Also spent a lot of time on this, but we are very transparent on renewal rates. We take a lot of pride in that and try to get the best value we can to you and your clients. With that, that's all I have. Uh, I'll pass to you, Matt. If anybody has any questions or if you have anything you want to add. Yeah, I appreciate that, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. We did have a couple of questions come in. So one was to verify the rating. So Equitrust is a, a B double plus or Hopefully yep. one step away from becoming an A minus. You guys were an A minus before, were you not, Jason? Yes, we were. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the year. I can't remember. I think it was like 2008 is when uh, we went down. It was during the financial crisis when we went from the A down to the B plus. Right. Uh, back then, I, I will say this too, and, and people may not be familiar with this, but the Wards 50. Uh, they're an independent group. It's called Ward 50, just W-A-R-D-S and the number 50. You can Google it if you want to. They do a list every year where they list their, the top 50 companies, insurance companies. This includes health and life insurance companies. So, so they're looking at over 700 companies. They pick their top 50 based off last five years financial performance. Uh, and we've made that. I, we just got now I think it's our fifth year in a row we've made the top 50. So that's something you can show your clients, too, if they have any concerns about it. Because you know, if you look at that list, there's other names on there that are big companies uh, that they're going to know. So I think it's a pretty big deal that, we, that we've made that list five years in a row as one of the top 50 companies with them. And we can, get you over a, a, we can get you over a piece on that or something, too. So. Okay. And then another question on MVAs. So majority of Equitrust parks do have MVAs, and depending on the state. Some states do not allow MVAs, but most states do. So pretty much all your yeah. your procs have MVAs, correct, Jason? They do. Uh, like you said, it depends on the state. Some states don't allow us to have an MVA, so we don't. But mm -hmm. if it's an MVA state that allows it, it does have an MVA. I always remind you, keep in mind that the MVA only applies if a surrender charge applies, right? So there's not going to be an MVA on their free withdrawal. There's not going to be an MVA uh, on the death benefit. Uh, or if they annuitize it or something like that. Correct. Or even, or, oh, yeah. or I should, I should, I should mention too that an MVA would never reduce, it, like the like the market ten bonus with the return of premium. They still get the return of premium, so an MVA would never reduce it below the return of premium either. Right. Right. Yeah. So basically, the, the companies have that to to help, you know, on their investments based on if the market sees a huge reduction in interest rates. So that's just something that they they have on their end to protect themselves. Yeah, it's that actually aren't. Or, or actually when rates are going up. Yeah, and I, I'd say this too, Matt, it's actually a benefit yeah. to the client. Because we have a market value adjustment, we're able to hire, offer higher caps and rates. If we, if we took an MBA off in every state, our rates would be lower too. Right. So, so it can be a benefit to the client. So. Yeah, benefits both parties there. But uh, yeah. appreciate the, the time and 
I know we, we've seen a really a, a good run with Equitrust here the last number of months. I know that Equitrust ran that little rate special here in May. And then we saw, you know, huge numbers in May, June, July. So we're looking forward to finishing the year strong with Equitrust. I think with the, the rates that, that are on board right now with their, their products with the, you know, the, the Barclays 50 and the Mark 5, I think we're looking at some really good results the next 12 months. You know, we'll see how the election goes coming down here in November and other things happen here in early 2021. Hopefully we'll put the uh, pandemic behind us going into 2021 and and look at uh, the brighter future going into next year. But uh, once again, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, it's always good to uh, have a good group on here on, on a Thursday webinar. And we appreciate Jason's time, you know, this morning from Equitrust. And we look forward to a, a great finish to the year. Anything you want to finish up with, Jason? No, I just want to thank everybody for taking time to join us today. I uh, appreciate for any of you that have submitted business to Equitrust, I really appreciate it. And for those that haven't, hopefully uh, you can find a fit for uh, us and with some of your clients. So have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Appreciate you and everybody at I too, Matt. Thank you. I right, appreciate it, Jason. I'll be contacting everyone that was on today's call and I'll be giving everyone a personal phone call to go over some any questions, get additional information out to you. And that way we can get you up and running with Equitrust at this point. So everyone have a great week. Have a great weekend coming up and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.